Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 157 of Prog Review. Indeed. Uh, can you hear me? I can't. Uh, my ears are still a bit strange. I've not been very well the last uh, few weeks. Um, very, very bad head cold, which has re- rendered me slightly deaf. Uh, so I'm, I'd be interested to know how this sounds when my ears finally clear. But anyway, I've gathered up my senses, the, the, the few senses I have left, and I thought I'd carry on and talk about David Bowie's Earthling album. Oh yes, because we were talking about Outside the last time. Do you remember? Do you remember that? It was a long time ago, but uh, I thought I'd carry on, if that's all right with you. Um, so yes, um, it was It was 1997. Oh, I remember it so well, so clearly. I was a somebody then, yes. Uh, we, were, we were all in a drum and bass back then. Do you remember? No, you don't remember it. Um, evolving out of jungle music and combining elements of electronica and acid jazz, it was um, an interesting blip in um, in a music, and it was a genre that seemed to be adopted by you know almost anyone. Everyone seemed to uh, be working elements of that into their music, and this is where. Earthling comes in because it was released on the 3rd of February 1997, roughly 15 years ago. And um, <clears throat> this is where we see Bowie at his most progressive, I believe. So we had Outside in 1995, with that was a previous album, the one I talked about, uh, with Bowie producing his first proper concept record. And here we see it like a flip side, because everyone was expecting a follow-up to Outside, and Bowie went, oh no. And so he, he, he completely changed his stride and, uh, and made a record which no one was expecting at all. It was completely, huh? what is this? Um, yeah, you know, he, he played around with different genres before, you know, Philly Soul with Young Americans and Da Funk in Let's Dance, but... This was something different because instead of like emulating a genre, you know, looking backwards and taking you know, another another musical genre, he he was actually almost like on the cutting edge. Again, we we forget, you know, we have short memories when we think about this. You see, because Earthling came out on the the third of February nineteen ninety seven, but the big album that's always held up, you know, the one that's always you know you know pulled up as the like the holy ground, like the the watermark, is Ronnie Sizes and represents. New Forms album. Don't worry, I've got that as well. Uh, but that didn't actually um, hit the shelves to October of the same year. So, you know, Bowie was really, you know, f- f- ahead. It was head and shoulders, you know, on this uh, this this wave, you know, along with, you know, likes of Goldie and that. So, why is this Earthling album progressive? Well, you know, you do know the difference between prog and progressive, don't you? You know, prog and progressive. Yeah, prog... Is that that music where they they noodle on, you know, and they 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 talk about goblins and elves and wear you know capes and pointed hats, and generally musically masturbate onto the uh, the grooves of the vinyl. Whereas progressive music is where an artist you know is pushing forward, you know, to, trying to do something different, completely different in this case. Sometimes you know, in or out of style of the time, you know, they can you know completely change their style and this is why Earthling is progressive so I'm, I'm, I'm glad we've we cleared that one up okay so anyway the album begins with the call to arms the supremely bonkers little wonder which i think is one of bowie's best singles you know probably one of his best singles from from the early 80s and whilst the album cut goes on a bit i tend to prefer the single edit you know it's much more pithy and to the point but it distills the whole album into one song and really gets across of the intent of Bowie and his crew. And the video is also brilliant when it features a cyberpunk end of the century beat up version of Ziggy. Keep your eye out for him. And uh, and yeah, the lyrics are based on the uh, dwarves in Snow White. Yeah, yeah. Looking for Satellites is another great track and I must dip my proverbial 
how to the guitar work of Reeves Gables. Um, he was instructed to play no chords on this song, so he ends up squirting a delightfully fiery solo over the track, and it appeals to my guitarist nature. In fact, Gabriel's work on the whole album needs to be commended, and I often think that he falls into the background when he's compared to the likes of Fripp, Alomar, Baloo, whoever. You know, I think he's a very a, a powerfully inventive guitarist, and it's a shame that you know he fell out with Bowie because. At this around this point, he was the creative catalyst, you know, and you know he, he is the creative catalyst that the old man needed, you know. So it's a great shame they no longer work together. But yeah, Reeves Gabriel's check out his solo work. Battle of Britain takes all the usual Bowie stylistic t- ticks and repackages them with skittering drums and fizzing guitars. And whereas Seven Years in Tibet slows everything down, provides a moment to catch your breath and have a little snooze. Uh, it all comes crashing back again with the guitars um, going and the song resolves itself in a satisfyingly scuzzy way. Oh, yes. Um, the overriding feeling about the next track, De- Dead Man Walking, is that the song isn't so much about drum and bass, but it's more about De- Bowie delivering a, a, a track with a decent dance beat. You know, I think he'd, he'd seen what the Pet Shop Boys had done to Hello Space Boy and uh, kind of adopted that blueprint with with this track here but you know again it's um it's a big song with a big heart and a lot of the songs on this album delivered with you know lots of power and you know meaning which you know which you'll find is lacking on his subsequent albums it's just it's, this is like the water mark this is the watershed moment where bowie you feel him kind of slipping into normalcy after this record whereas before always try and do something different uh, Telling Lies returns to the skittering percussion of drum and bass, but by now my interest is starting to wane somewhat and the energy levels start to dip. It does, you know. And the song just seems to just fizzle out, you know, runs out of any kind of puff. The last thing you should do also leaves my concentration to, to wander off. Look, it's wandering off. Uh, with the band disposing of any melody and hook and, and just letting the drum beats do all the work. Thankfully, the penultimate track, I'm Afraid of Americans, which was an old track off of Outside, and if you listen out, if you're a movie fan, it appears on the now classic Showgirls film, oh yeah, but in a slightly different form, earlier form. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the song. It's got you know bleeps and bloops and crashing choruses, and it's got a lot of character, so it, you know, it pulls itself forward as another standout track from the record. The album ends with Law, Earthlings on Fire. Or I, let me get it right. Law, open parenthesis, Earthlings on Fire, close parenthesis. Um, it doesn't work for me, I'll be honest. It, lack, again, lacks a hook, and it doesn't really kind of function very well as a, the final track on the album. Um, in fact, this is probably one of my my criticisms of the record slightly too long it's about 48 minutes it could have been about 40 um but the sequencing of the record you know they tend to bunch a lot of the strong material up together and leave the weaker the weaker tracks to kind of be picked off you know like the sick wildebeest on the serengeti i don't know where that came from um but you know if they'd have restructured it it might have been a bit more of a, an even and more pleasant listening experience but it doesn't matter because I've got a lot of love for Earthling. From the patriotic Alexander McQueen, God bless him, his designed Union flag coat on the album cover, you know, to the, the video for Little Wonder, to the whole thing being, you know, again, futuristic, forward looking, you know, very end of the century. You know, I thought it was, you know, I think it's a very interesting record. It didn't sell very well, didn't sell many copies. And it's probably going to be forgotten by many as a great Bowie album, but this is Bowie being genuinely progressive, and I doubt he'll do anything quite as interesting as this again. Oh, that's a bold claim, isn't it? But I'm going to stick with it. No, this was the, probably one of the last interesting Bowie albums. So, my rating. <laughs> Why? It has to be four little wonders out of five. <laughs> Yo, yes. Four little wonders out of five. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's that done. Thanks for watching again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for. Hopefully, I, I sound okay. We've done this in daylight today. Yeah, daylight. Ooh, 
how exotic. Um, again, if you've enjoyed the videos, if you want to see more, there's plenty of them. Uh, just type in tick, 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 to your to your little bar at the top. HTTP colon slash slash bit dot li, bitly slash prog review. It'll appear here as if by magic. And you can see the playlist. That's good, isn't it? You can see the playlist and um, all the videos I've done and pick your way through them and have a veritable feast of prog. Oh, yes, indeed. It is good fun. Uh, my name's been Darren Locke. I've been talking about earthling by that there david bowie we'll do this all again really soon i hope and um thanks for popping by only one more thing to say and that is i think i've forgotten what do i normally say prog on <laughs>